hi guys so I'm catching up on my previous video in the previous video if you have not seen so I'll briefly cover that we try to exploit a vulnerable machine running an FTP server in a Windows machine and we were able to exploit it from our Linux box and finally we got the shell and we were able to do all sorts of things from our Linux box because we had complete control of the victim machine so that's how we did and uh, I don't know how uh, why I'm saying like this it looks like some uh, some kind of attack some uh, I don't know and okay let's go on with it uh, I don't know what I am uh, talking about <coughs> so in that attack the even the vulnerability was exploited but how did we got the reverse shell how did we uh, have access to the command prompt in fact what happened is when we exploited we passed it instruction in the form of what we call shell code and that shell code allowed us basically it gave its connection to us we were able to listen and then using netcat we were able to connect to that machine so those characters hexadecimal characters which you saw backslash x backslash x those stuff that is shell code but when it is written it's not written in that way no one can write uh, these are numbers how how would someone remember such numbers so there are many ways and i typically write it in assembly and then do a object dump of that assembled file and then paste it in the shell code so i will show you a quick demo right now and there are some people who prefer to write it in c and then uh, probably they convert it into assembly or they take the opcodes directly from the disassembled file so for me i make use of the assembly so as you can see here i'm sorry i'm feeling a little sleepy uh, so this is a assembly code I I took from uh, one of the websites and I'm it's not stable also I'm working on it but uh, I'll show you quickly what it can do these commands hell I can't remember oh it's fine so as you can see this is not uh, stable but it opens a calculator program so that's our assembly code okay and now if we do a object dump so it's going to basically dump how it looks like the opcodes okay so here we have something called .txt which are the machine instructions and then uh, we can pass this to our shell code so as you can see it starts at 31 B this area over here and then and then it ends at D7 over here right so the way to invoke a shell code is uh, first you have to test it in your machine so this is a standard template and then you just paste it over here right how simple is that isn't it that's how you write a shell code okay so these these are numbers that starts with 31 and it ends with d7 you just paste it there and then run so let's check that so gcc compile dot c and then high dot exe so uh, forgive me this is not stable but it works and i will make it stable in the forthcoming video and probably dig some more into assembly so that's how it is working guys so this is how we write a shell code okay so these are assembly and i'm using nasm netwide assembler and I have what I have over here is uh, uh, GCC build over here which I'm using for linking the LD command it's uh, the linker and then 
the shell code is running 64 bit 7 uh, windows 7 and uh, this is our exploit basically and uh, we could even pass this data to our victim machine and it would open calc.exe in the victim machine but that's not cool shell bind shell code is cool or even installing malwares so uh, thank you for your time guys and uh, i hope you enjoyed this quick video and uh, do let me know if you want i can make a video on assembly also because windows assembly it's ridiculously hard much much harder than linux and linux is straightforward because of its interrupts fixed interrupts so uh, if you do not know about interrupts so i can briefly cover that so if it, it's just a way to tell the operating system that hey i want to do this and that way never changes but in windows with every release every patch every service pack it changes so what we make use of uh, is uh, what we do is we make use of windows api so in order to be able to write something a good shell code we have to have very good knowledge in assembly and then second is win a windows api win32 api now that is uh, ported to 64 bit and then windows 8 or 10 is ported to windows rt i guess but i have not worked on that so these are the things and then also there are many os memory protections while a vulnerability is ex exploited so those exploitation uh, those protection can also be bypassed using the same assembly instructions so the shell code would change it wouldn't be this much it would be a little bit bigger but the same assembly language uh, is used even then itself so what will happen is there would be assembly instructions like what you see over here that uh, there is a randomization of the memory layout so how would you find that so those every instruction would be written here i will cover that in future so uh, just uh, giving you uh, this guys this information and trying to explain as best as i can but still if uh, there is some questions so please do let me know